the next one is James 122. But be ye doers of the word, not heroes only, deceiving your own selves. So this is, this. to be honest, this isn't a really good one for your point. He makes a, more of a point about it being about works in chapter 2. This one just said, it's his admonition to make sure you do the works of the law. Well, again, that's not something that is is going to get you anywhere in the context of being free in the love and the grace and the acceptance of God. That puts you back on, on standing, equal standing or equal footing with what Adam did in the garden. James is talking about learning of the knowledge of good and evil so that you can be in right standing with God. And that is something I disagree with. And you can say that's blasphemous, that I disagree with something in the Bible, but there's no way to reconcile James with what Paul was saying. And I've seen people do it. They do backflips and gymnastics and, and all this contortionism, just like in Galatians, where Paul says, they, speaking of James, John, and Peter, I think the three of those, he says, they added nothing to my faith. And I've seen guys just sit there and twist and say, see, see, Paul agrees with them so much that he's just saying that, we all agree perfectly. No, he's saying, you don't add anything to my faith. We're supposed to add to each other's faith, add to each other's understanding. And Paul was making it clear that they added nothing to his faith. Paul was way ahead of them. And he didn't always do what they told him to do. This is a side note. You know, they said, you go and talk to the Gentiles, Paul, you know, and we'll take care of the Jewish people. Well, every time Paul walked into a town, he went straight to the synagogue. And the first people he talked to was the Jewish people. Not that he was disobedient, it says that he wasn't going to argue with them. Paul was just on another level, and he wasn't going, around, wasn't going to go around disrespecting people. He did lots of religious things. It, again, that's, that's what makes Paul so amazing, is he was not for religion, but to win a soul, he would do something religion. He would take a bow, he would shave his head, he would fast, he would do this, that, and the other, to purify himself so that someone might listen to him. And that is very gracious. That it is, it's a good thing that he did that. But it doesn't mean that he believed in the religious precepts that they were pushing. It just means that he was willing to, to reach people that believed in that stuff. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. I used to have this one committed to memory. This was a great one in religion. I was taught. But I don't have it to memory anymore. So it says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. In the Old Testament, amazingly enough, Hosea 6.6, 6, and I, I should know this one, it's a short verse, and I've said it so many times. The Lord himself says, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Now, that's not fully in context by itself, so I suggest you go back and read all of Hosea, and especially Hosea 6, to give it better context. But it just improves or clarifies even more what he is saying in that verse. He is not desiring sacrifices and whole burnt offerings and all that. He is seeking, <clears throat> he desires, I mean, he desires mercy and the knowledge of God. In other words, if you gain the knowledge of God, you will see his mercy. Because it's not even about obedience, like this one says in 1 Samuel. Now, he was talking to Saul. Saul disobeyed. Saul was given something to do, and he did not do it. What he did was, he went out and he sacrificed a bunch of animals. <clears throat> Excuse me. He sacrificed a bunch of animals. So, Samuel is speaking, not in general terms here, he's speaking in very specific terms. You think you did good for God by keeping back some of the stuff that he said to destroy and you're offering up these burnt offerings and I'm telling you Samuel says I'm telling you God doesn't want that God God wants you to obey what he said so that's not a general order to every person who believes in God that's to that's to Saul and Saul blew it so Samuel was telling him that he blew it that's why as we know, or as I believe anyway, Scripture does not contradict. It does not contradict. And he could say in Hosea that he, again, I need to get this to memory. He desired mercy 
and not sacrifice in the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. That's what he really desires. He desires that more than all. Because again, he knows we are not designed to obey. Giving more commands and receiving more commands and believing more commands and learning more commands does not make you obedient. If you ever notice that, you can learn all the commands you want. Or you could focus in on one and just decide you are going to obey that command above all commands. Like some people do with the Sabbath, and they don't. They all fail. Every single one of them fails. And they fail miserably, like crashing and burning, like a dumpster fire, or a fire on, uh, dumpster on fire being hit by two trains. I mean, <laughs> it's a train wreck when people try to obey. They never obey. No one obeys. That is not what he desires. He doesn't expect us to. It's just that if you ask for it, he's going to say, okay, this is how you do it. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Remember that one? Sermon on the Mount, 548 of Matthew. That's what he says. That's the deal. If you want to be obedient, just be perfect as God is perfect. And the religious people have all these explanations. No, it means mature like God is mature. God is mature. Okay, I'm going to be mature. Yeah. No, that's religious stuff. He's saying be perfect. That's how you get right with God through the law. But even then you won't know him. Because you know him through his mercy. And if you obey perfectly, what do you need with his mercy? That's the other crazy thing about it. The more obedient you supposedly get, the less you need of his mercy. They don't say it in those words, but that is clearly... So much mercy when you came in and you were lost. But now you, you're really starting to get this thing down. You don't need it. No. You need his mercy all the time. And it's not that you need it more, but as you you get to see who you are in light of who he is, you realize more and more how much you need his mercy. And that is a wonderful thing. It's not that you're pitiful. It's that he is wonderful. And that's what is so beautiful about it. It's his beauty, his kindness, his mercy, his love. It outshines everything. It's, it's greater than your weaknesses. And that's the other thing. I have all these side notes, but people seem to think that their weaknesses are greater than God's strength. No. His, his strength is made perfect in our weakness.